Here I am with another Procreate 5 sneak peek beta thing. Uh, the number one question I was getting uh, both online on like YouTube and stuff, but also at THU from people who didn't have the beta and found out I had it was how does the Photoshop brush importing work? Is it cool? Does it work? What are the, the problems with it if there are any? And so I'm not really that guy. I'm not the guy that like wants to make sure all of my Photoshop brushes have made it into Procreate. I barely use uh, that many brushes to begin with, but I do have a couple that I test and then uh, and then we'll try to test like getting a whole bunch in. I'm recording this part now after recording the part off the screen. So I'm just gonna tell you now, I test two separate brushes and then I realize, actually I haven't tested tossing in like a ton at once. So then I find like an old file that I have that has just all my Photoshop brushes in it. Again, most of which I don't use and I just toss them all in at once. So you get to see what that looks like. So let's go. So let's go ahead and try importing Photoshop brushes. Uh, I already went ahead and exported some from Photoshop, just two, so that we can test them out. Um, if you know how to use your iPad and all of that, uh, some of this shouldn't be a surprise, but I'll go ahead and explain it just so that we can get all the details out. Uh, you of course swipe from the bottom and then you get this and use your iCloud. Here I've got a Procreate Brushes um, folder already created with two tests. You can see based on their icon that they are Photoshop brushes. In fact, is there a way that we can get like info? Info. Do we get the dot? Yep, there you go, test.abr. So what do we do? We pick it up and we drop it in. There, let's go ahead and shrink this. And there we go. We have our test uh, brush. Let's uh, do uh, just black. So this is a brush that I got a long time ago from somewhere and I modified it a bit. Um, I don't remember where I originally got it from, but I know I did not create it completely from scratch. Uh, let's go ahead and look at it, I guess, in the editor. That's what it looks like. I use it mostly for messy concepting and then occasionally for doing um, like sort of like an inky ink thing. I did a series of characters a long time ago that were all inked with this brush. So you can see that's what it looks like. It comes from Photoshop. It works. This is the way that it looks uh, when I use it in Photoshop as well. So I might use it for like blocking something in, kind of, you know, heavy. I think I talked about this actually in the last video, but um, anyways, point is uh, blocking in something heavy and messy. And then I might even use it one more time to do like something a little bit more, you know, clean so that we actually know what we're looking at. Um, and that's it. So we successfully have a Photoshop brush just dragged and dropped and running in. Uh, I got this brush, as I said, a long, long time ago. So we know that this isn't anything recent for whatever means of like, will it, it maybe it was recently created or I don't know, whatever skepticism may be out there. This is a brush that I've had for like 10 years or something like that. So there's that. now. That's cool, but one thing that it doesn't show is the new color dynamic stuff. So I actually have a brush that I used once a long time ago for a project that has the color uh, dynamic. So I just grabbed it. So let's go back to here and grab number two. Oop, yep. Okay. And now we have test two, pine trees. So you can see I've already got a dark green right there. Let's go ahead and set like a lighter green as well. And uh, fairly small, it doesn't have to be that big. And we've got trees. Look at that. They're all different shades and they're different sizes and everything. Oh yeah, I gotta turn off the thing so my finger 
doesn't uh, make a mark anymore. But anyways, that's that's that. So just in case you're wondering, I used this for I, I set up a real simple scene here. I just had a, a project where I had to have a bunch of trees in the background, so I just did this type of thing and used this brush to establish some trees. They were really far in the distance, but I needed to get a bunch of them in, and it just seemed like the best way to do it, given the stylization of the project. So, oops, some of those trees got a little wild there. But, but anyways, the point is, it works. It's simple. It works how you would hope that it would work. Um, which is pretty cool. So the the Photoshop import brush thing uh, works and uh, pretty cool. The only thing I haven't done is I haven't tested it with multiple brushes as part of one thing. Actually, let's go see what that looks like. As you can see here, we have a new file called MH Brushes. This is a Photoshop brush file that I basically just bring with me and I throw it up. I don't actually use most of the brushes. I seriously use like five out of all the brushes that are in here. But the thing that's just interesting is there are a lot of brushes in here. So let's see what happens when we dump the whole thing in. Let's see if it works. crap let's see MH brushes boom so these are all of my Photoshop brushes at once dragged in which is pretty awesome let's see yeah that feels about right and let's see if there's other ones I mean I've used all of these like in some level but not in any kind of, oh, this was like a stupid leaf brush that I made for like going around a tree edge. Um, okay, something gooey. Whoa, let's go smaller. Gooey, uh-huh. Anything else worth looking at? Ugly, these are great names. Okay. I mean, these all look how they should. You can see these ridiculous ones from when I was literally lazy, oof. The only thing is right now it seems like because of the difference in canvas size, like some of my brushes are made really big, and in uh, Procreate, obviously we don't have as big of a canvas. So some of these I'm bringing in and they're like default is that they're like huge. So that's one thing, but it's not, you know, that's nobody's fault really. See, there you go, there's the silhouette of a tree. Isn't that brush lovely? Okay, whoops, not duplicate, get rid of it. Okay, let's just check a couple more brushes and see how they work. Uh, ink hatch, okay. I mean, these are all really cool to, to have in here. I don't really, oh, so this is actually gonna be a pretty big test. This one just puts down a half tone. Um, and it, yeah, and it runs it over itself like that, okay. Oh yeah, good, it works. It kind of feels like it's working backwards though. I can't remember now. I'll have to check that real quick in Photoshop. But it feels like that should be the opposite. Oh, and it's having some issue filling in. Oh, holy crap. So once I lifted my pen up, look at that. That's pretty crazy. Um, so that, that one looks like it's having some issues. Let's look at it again. Let's look at it in the editor and see what's going on with it. Okay, so it's doing the right pattern here. When it was in the other side, it looked really wonky, and I think that might have just been the way that it was interpolating it, but, or not interpolating, kind of like mipping it out a little bit. Um, yeah, the spacing, having the spacing be tighter would actually be better. Let's look at the grain, okay. So here we could adjust that. Uh, if we want those dots to be bigger, which is cool. And seeing that happen in real time like that is dope. Okay, but anyways, the point is, I think that we, uh, here, let's cancel. I think that we've got the point across, which is that these all work. Here's one I have called cool. Oh yeah, that is kind of cool. Oh, it's, it's like a fingerprint brush. Okay, it works.
So those of you out there who uh, have like your massive uh, Photoshop brush library, you can now drag those in and just go nuts. Now, I do think that there's going to be some parameters here or there, especially when it comes to feel, the type of feel that you get with the Apple Pencil versus say a Wacom tablet and a stylus and stuff like that, that you'll have to adjust for uh, either in the settings or yourself manually, or maybe you just are kind of cool with the happy accident maybe you get that, that you kind of weren't anticipating. Uh, but anyways, the, the key thing though is that it works for the most part. The only reason I'm putting that little caveat on there is I obviously haven't tested absolutely everything. So I'll, I'll mess around with this a little bit more and see if I can figure it out, but I just wanted to make sure that I gave you guys the rundown. This was kind of the number one question people were asking me. See, there's an example of one that's like way too big, just out of the gate, and it's gotta be brought way down. So this was the number one question people were asking me uh, when I posted the last video. So let's get this up on the internet as soon as I can so that you all can see how this feature works. Pretty cool.